Shalom. Shalom. You doing all right? Call me right before service. Everyone's doing all right over there in paradise. Must be nice living in paradise. To all you guys that's on, say shalom. So I know when you guys are on. Alone, everyone. Okay. Alone, Angel. Good to see you last night. The Zoom. Appreciate you. So you guys slept good. Slept good. Give it a couple more minutes. Cool. Caveat, Shalom Caveat. Appreciate the Zoom too as well. If you guys would like this Bible study today, and we got some news, but uh, praise the Almighty, definitely give glory to the Most High, you know, giving me another day, makes me grateful, makes me want to work harder, see different things going on in the world, makes me want to strive for more, so uh, appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys, We the people we working with. Other people we're trying to get into the body. You know, hopefully they take those steps and get make it into the kingdom. Who we at? Yeah. Oh, 10 30. It's time. It's time. I'm going to read the last couple messages and let's start the introduction. Shalom. All right, Vince. All right, Shalom, everyone. If you guys doing all right, Vince, I'll still see you in about 11 hours. I'll see you in 11 hours back to my home. My home country, Dago. I'm a Dago boy, San Diego. You know how we do. You know how we do. Where the men stay true, Hebrews united. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. So um, I'll see you in a couple hours. And I'm going to visit a brother. Hopefully he ain't sleep by the time I get there. Be there around 1030 at night. Kevy, I didn't forget about you. I got some business to take care of. I'll swing up, uh, drive up to see you on a Sabbath. Don't trip. I got you all day. But um, praise almighty. What time we got? Oh, it's time. Welcome. To true Hebrews united. The Almighty Yah through his son Yeshua Mashiach. This is your beloved, beloved, holiness instructor, discipleship field sergeant. About to get into the book as usual. Definitely thank the Almighty, giving all honor to the Almighty through his son Yeshua Mashiach. 
definitely thank the, all the apostles, people that gave us the word beforehand. And the apostles is over the side of multiple churches today. The prophets has given us the word, telling us the times that's coming and showing us the way that's going to um, come across the saints of the world. For the, you know, thank the prophets, the evangelists, the people out there. I try to do the work of evangelists. It says make uh, do work, the work of evangelists, make proof your ministry. Evangelist goes out to places that don't really have the gospel or people or individuals and they go out and give them the word. So I need to do some work out there. I'll be going to visit people, find out whatever. Evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. The elders taking oversight over multiple churches or whatnot. The bishops, same thing. The deacons, uh, helper or a fellow teacher or minister in the gospel, helper in the gospel. Across the whole planet, all the brothers and sisters keeping his commandments, his statutes. So what's the commandment is thou shalt not do. His statute is building a parapet or if you see your brother's ox falling into a ditch, you help your brothers out, your brother's ox. If you borrow something, and then you give it back. You don't keep a brother's place. Those are statutes. Things to do with safety. Things to do with how you deal with money. How you pay your employers. And we read in the in the, the statutes in the in the law. The judgments. If you commit adultery, what's the judgment? You stone them. If you're in witchcraft, what's the judgment? You stone them. The judgments. You pass judgment on a behavior. You know, commandments and judges. His precepts. Obviously, his ways. And his ways, all his ways, what what is his perfect will? You know, his ways, you know, it may be something that there's no scripture in it, but you know, hey, I, I just don't want to do it. You know, I know the mindset of the Most High and he wouldn't want me to do that. Yeah, I don't have a pinpoint scripture, but I know he ain't cool with doing that. Oh, there's nothing with vape. Uh, yeah, I know vape may not have nicotine in it or something. There's, But just the image of that, it says a stain from the very appearance of evil. No, nah, I'm good. I don't want to vape. Yeah, I don't have no scripture for it, but I'm still not going to vape. You know what I'm saying? I'm still not going to do it. No. Brothers, I I, I, just, I just like the cigarette just hanging out my mouth. I don't smoke it, but I just want it hanging out of my mouth. Nah, I don't want to do it. I'm good. No, it's not no sin to have a cigarette hanging out your mouth, but I'm not going to do it. So, um, keeping the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, the precepts, and the ways. Definitely thank the people on the Facebook and YouTube. Please uh, get on the YouTube. Uh, subscribe to that. Trying to get that up, so when I go in outreach and hit the door to door again, once we get get uh, some more cars and flyers out there with the CR code on there, so they can find our YouTube uh, channel that we could get out there. And so for me to live screen, go out there, share it, share it to your friends, share it to your neighbors, share it to the person you don't like, share it to you know whoever, per, a random person at the gas station, help them uh, get saved, help them be the light. Uh, so definitely thank all you guys on the Facebook, YouTube that uh, support that's seeking the gospel getting these scriptures off of the page and get it into your heart that's the only way you're going to make it um all you guys out there that share and like the videos i appreciate you guys i love you guys at the end of the day i want you guys to be safe you know what i'm saying i i don't teach a prosperity gospel i really teach a hey, we gotta live holy we gotta live clean we gotta give all, all serve the almighty with all our heart our mind our soul with all our soul with our strength with everything you got you gotta serve the most high give it all you know what i'm saying if you only have a full glass, you pull that four glass into the most high. You don't reserve anything. Go all out with the most high. So um, definitely thank the uh, thank all you people out there that's uh, supporting not just True Hebrews United, but other ministers out there. I'm not the only one. I'm one piece of sand in the whole beach and whatnot. There's plenty of ministers out there teaching truth. I'm not the only one. If you don't have a congregation, you need to find a congregation. You cannot save yourself. The Almighty set elders up in every city, apostles and prophets, evangelists, teachers, elders, bishops, deacons. You need to find someone that's your spiritual leader, and you need to be a part of a body. There's no way around it. You're just going to take this Bible and get saved. That's not how it works. He is the door. Anyone that comes any other way is a thief and a robber. No way around that. You need to find a congregation. You know, so uh, praise the Almighty. Uh, and then let's get this party started because we got some news. I want to do with some news again. Uh, praise the Almighty. So, with all that said, being done, let's let the fingers do the walking. And the scriptures do the talking. You on fire. I got that fire. I'm going to be singing songs. I think me and Kevin yet said we'd probably do a duet. she be singing songs. I'll be singing songs. So we'll get on that. You know, I got those vocals all day. You know what I'm saying? Brother vocal. That's what they used to call me before I start teaching. So uh, turn to Genesis. 
Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Let's get it. Amen. Genesis chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 1. Praise the Almighty. Praise the Almighty. Let's get it. Brother Vince, see you in a bit. All right. You guys talking again. A whole bunch this time. Genesis chapter 6. Starting at verse 1. Let's get it. And it came to pass when man began to multiply upon the face of the earth that the daughters were born unto them. And the sons of the Most High saw the daughters of man, that they were fair. And those sons of the Most High are fallen angels, uh, sons of God. And you can prove that in the book of Job. Whatever, that they are, and uh, that they took them wives of all that they have chosen. And when the Almighty said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in those lands. And in those days, also after that, when the sons of uh, the Almighty came unto the children of uh, the daughters of man, that they bear them, uh, bear of them, the same became many men of renown, which are of old men of renown, which I think they're these aliens, you know what I'm saying, with the little dome shape, those skeletons they're finding, all that. Those are those uh, men of renown and whatnot, those giants, all that foolishness. But let's keep going. That's my theory on these aliens and whatnot. And the Almighty saw that the wickedness uh, was uh, uh, was great upon the earth, and every imagination and thoughts of the earth was evil continually. And it repented the Almighty that hey, he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. That's that's sad if you grieve the Almighty at his heart. And the Almighty said, I will destroy man with which I created from the face of the earth, but man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made man that made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Almighty. But Noah found grace. Let's keep going. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. He was perfect. So people say you can't be perfect. The Bible just say you can't. And in his generation, there wasn't uh, as many laws, commandments, statutes, and judgments and whatnot. But he had commandments. Let's keep going. Uh, perfect in his generation. Uh, done lost my place. There we go. Noah begat, uh, and Noah walked with the Most High. Noah begat three sons, Shem, Han, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt before the Almighty, and the earth was full of violence. And the Almighty uh, looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. The Almighty said unto Noah, the, uh, the end of, said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and I will, uh, behold, I will destroy them from the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms that thou shalt make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without in the pitch. And it's still on Mount Ararat to this day, I believe. So that wooden object that they found hay and petrified dung. Uh, so, uh, anyway, so the whole world, the Almighty is going to destroy the whole world, and he's seen Noah and Noah's sons. So let's go to uh, chapter 7. We're going to go to chapter 7. And we're going to, matter of fact, yeah, chapter 7, I'm going to start at verse 1. And the Almighty said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy, uh, thy house in the ark, for uh, for thee have I seen righteousness before me in this gener generation. Every clean beast that thou shalt take uh, thee by sevens, the male and his female, and the beast that are, are not clean by two, the male and the female. So right here you see there was clean and unclean meat. So they had laws. They had commandments. They knew what a clean and unclean meat Cain and Abel knew what to sacrifice. He sacrificed a sheep. He didn't sacrifice a pig. He didn't sacrifice an owl. He sacrificed a correct animal unto the Almighty, and the Almighty received that and didn't receive Cain's. He's received Abel's. So let's keep going. Um, I'm going to go with verse 6, uh, verse 5. And Noah did accordingly to all the Almighty commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood was waters was upon the earth and Noah went in and his sons and his wives and his sons wives with him in the ark because the waters of the flood and of the uh we'll stop right there so anyways the flood came and destroyed everyone now Noah was righteous and because his righteousness it says in the I found righteousness he saved his wife and he saved his children because of that now when he destroyed the whole earth all the sinners and their children destroyed got destroyed all the sinners and their children got destroyed but let's keep going. I'm just laying the foundation. Go ahead and give me Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Verse 20. Let's get it. And the Almighty said, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come upon unto me. And if not, I will know. And the man turned their face from thence and went towards Sodom. And Abraham stood yet before the Almighty. And Abraham drew near 
and said, Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there will be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place of the fifty righteous that are therein? And he said, I won't do it for fifty, and then forty-five, and then forty, thirty. And he got all the way down to ten, and he like, man, I ain't saving a whole city for no less than ten people. Especially if he didn't save the whole world, but for eight people. I'm not going to save a, whole, a, a couple of cities and villages round about for ten people. So, the Almighty ended up destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. He he said, Abraham, I'm not going to destroy it if there's 10 people in the city. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll, I'll spare the city. So let's go ahead and give me uh, verse 19. Verse 19, uh, 19. Chapter 19. Chapter 19. Verse 24. Then the Almighty rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire. From the uh, from the Almighty out of heaven, and He overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that uh, which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind Lot's wife, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning in the place where he stood before the Almighty, and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards the land of the plain, and behold, lo, the smoke of the country rent up smoke uh, as the smoke of a furnace. So the Almighty once again destroyed the Sodom and Gomorrah. Not man, woman, children, all that. But Lot, it says he was a righteous man, vexed with their uh, uh, vexed with their unlawful deeds. He was able to save his two daughters because he was righteous. He was able to save his two daughters. So here we see another situation because we live righteous, our children benefit from that, and because if you live wicked, your children suffer for that. But let's keep going. Give me uh, Numbers chapter sixteen. Numbers chapter sixteen. Starting at verse one, and the Lord spake unto Mo uh, uh, chapter sixteen. Now Korah, this is now when Moses was in the uh, wilderness. They were in the wilderness, and um, there was people. There was people uh, that rose up against Moses. So we're going to get into that right now. Now Korah, the son of Kizroth, I mean Izah, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. So he was a Levite too, as a priest, but he was in the high priest family. And Dathan and Abram, the son of Eleph, and on and on the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses and certain of the children of Israel, two hundred and fifty princes of assembly, famous in the congregation of man and renowned. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto him, You take too much upon, upon you, seeing all the congregation of holy, every one of them. That ain't going to happen, every one of them. But and the Almighty is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Almighty. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah, to all the company, saying, Even tomorrow the Almighty will shew you who are his and who is holy and who will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. So he says, Hey, they rose up against the man of the Most High. The Almighty used him for Israel, right? Verse 23, verse 23 now. And the, and the Almighty spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the con congregation. Get you from about the tabernacle of Korah, tabernacle is a tent, uh, Korah and Dathan and Abram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he said unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle, and that's not spiritually come out of their tents, because that's pretty much what people say with Babylon. Oh, that's spiritually come out. No, he says you need to get away from the geographical location. This proximity, get away from their tents. Let's keep going. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah and Dathan and Abraham on every side, and Dathan and Abraham came out and stood at the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Almighty hath sent me to do all his work, for I have done uh, not done them of my own mind. If the men die of a common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of men, then the Almighty have sent me not, sent uh, have not sent me. But if the Almighty make a new thing and the earth open their mouth and swallow them up with all that are pertaining unto him, and they go uh, down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Almighty. And it came to pass that he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up 
and their houses and all the men that are pertaining to the Korah uh, and all their goods. And they and all that pertaineth unto them went down alive into the pit and the earth it closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. Now it says their wives and their children. They didn't even know that they rose up. My dad rose up and went against Moses. These children had nothing to do with that. And they suffered because these men decided to live unrighteous. They suffered because of that. Their wives and their children. They suffered because of that. But the people that didn't go against Moses and stayed in righteousness, they were able to keep their kids. The same as Noah, the same as Lot, the people that actually did right, they actually saved their kids. But well, let's keep going. Give me Joshua. Let me show you guys something. Give me Joshua. Chapter 6. No, give me 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. See, I'm showing you this parallel because this relates to us today and what you do affects your children. Now, I already taught you are your children's Moses, but this actually deals with the parents or people one day that want to be parents. Let's keep going. First Samuel chapter 15, verse one. And Samuel also said unto, unto, uh, said unto Saul, the Almighty sent me to anoint thee to be king over the people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken unto the voice of the words of the Almighty. Thus saith the Almighty of hosts, I remember that which the Amalek, Amalek, Amalek did to Israel, and how he laid wait him in a way when he came from Egypt. Now go and smite the Am Amalek, and utterly destroy all they have, and spare not, spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, Ox and sheep, camel and donkey. It says kill everything. Kill everything. These people were wicked. So even a suckling person that was still breastfeeding. That didn't know anything. He said destroy them all. Because they're sinners. Destroy them all. See. We have this. I'm not going to. I'll wait on that. I'm going to deal with that after I do the shout outs. See. We need to see as, as us striving before the most high. Your kids suffer by you not serving the Most High. And we're going to get into this a little bit. Your kids suffer. Now, we, like I said, I dealt on you and your children's Moses, but now I'm dealing with you. Because the best thing you could do for your kids is to love them unto salvation. The best thing you could do for your kids is to be a light to them. But how can you be a light to them if you're not walking in the light? Now, this is an example when the Almighty passes judgment. This Samuel example is when the almighty actually sent people to pass judgment on people the other times fire and brimstone a flood came down the ground opened up but now it's like hey i'm going to use you to pass judgment and he even used israel to pass judgment on these people to kill both man and woman suckling and child it's just take them all out and so we get this concept oh my kids my kids will be saved we're going to get into this in a little bit go ahead and give me joshua chapter six i want to show you something Joshua chapter 6. And we're going to start at verse 16. All right. Joshua chapter 6. Verse 16. And it came to pass. Now, this is when Joshua came and they were going to Jericho. And he said, you know, you, you're going to walk around the city seven times and you don't make a sound. But the seventh time you're going to make a great shout. Right. So let's keep going. This, this last day you're going to walk seven times and you make a great shout. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest, he's giving them the instructions, blew with the trumpets. Joshua said unto the people, shout for the almighty have given you the city and the city shall uh, be accursed and all that are in therein to the almighty only Rahab uh, the all harlot shall live she uh she and all that are with her in her house because she had hid the messengers that w that we sent and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed thing lest you make yourself a curse when you have taken of the cursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it so i want you to remember trouble it well let's keep going so now let's go to 
chapter 7. Now I'm going to read chapter 7. So now they go into the city, right? They destroy the city. They destroy the city. Let's keep going. But the children of the children of Israel, what? Check this out. The children of Israel committed a trespass and a cursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zaba, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took an accursed thing, and the anger of the Almighty was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, the anger of one person, he says, Oh, the whole children disobeyed me. They transgress. Now the whole anger was against everybody. Everybody. And that's what happens. You mess up in your home with the most high and he passes judgment on your behavior. You think that you're not going to suffer if he cursed the works of your hand. And now you don't make money and you're struggling. You, you don't think your kids are going to suffer for that. You don't think you, nothing's going to happen to your kids because you choose not to serve the most high. But you choose not to go all the way with the most high. You don't think that they're not going to suffer. Well, let's keep going. He took an accursed thing, right? And Joshua sent man to Jer uh, from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Hadon on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the man that went up viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said, Let not all of Israel go up, but let only two or three uh, three thousand go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people labor there, for they are but few. So it was a little small city. It wasn't Jericho. Jericho had high walls. It's a little small city. It says, Don't even send all of us for this. Just send a couple thousand. We'll go smash, take care of this, right? And so they went up there and the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the man of Ai. And the man of Ai smote them, about 36 men. So 36 guys died, right? Man, and they chased them from before the gate of the Shiram and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. It's like, man, we got destroyed. We took this big city and this little small city, we got destroyed. So Joshua rent his clothes and fell upon the earth and, uh, and his face before the ark of the almighty unto eventide and he and his elders and put dust upon their head and joshua said at last uh o almighty yah wherefore has thou all brought this people over the jordan to deliver us into the hand of our rights to destroy us would to god we have continued to dwell on the other side of the jordan and the almighty o lord what shall i say when israel turn their backs before their enemies for the canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ uh environ us around and cut our name off from the earth. And what will thou do unto thy great name? And the Almighty said to Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore thy life is upon thy face. Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken a cursed thing, and I have stolen and disassembled also, and put it even among their own stuff. So he said, Hey, there's sin in the camp. He says, Get up. There's sin in the camp. You need to take care of this. You know what I'm saying? He said, All of Israel sinned against me because of one man. And because of one man or one woman, your whole family will suffer for you, for your doings. But let's keep going. All right. It says, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were a curse. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the curse from among you. It says, I'm not even going to be with you no more. The Almighty's not playing with that. And your kids are looking up to you for guidance and for help. Your kids are innocent and you choose to live in sin. You choose to not repent. You choose to not do right. You choose to delay. You choose to play around. Oh, I'll just dip dab. Or I'll quit smoking eventually. Or I'll quit cussing eventually. I'll quit watching this eventually. Only thing that happens is your kids suffer for that. Your kids suffer. Oh, I love my. How about you just stop feeding your kids? Oh, that's not right. How about you stop changing your kids' diapers? Oh, that would be wrong. Well, it's wrong for you to live in sin. And you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap that. You're going to reap that. Let's keep going, though. And it says, up, uh, sanctify the people and say, uh, uh, sanctify yourself against tomorrow. For thus said the Almighty, the God of Israel, the Almighty of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thy enemies until you take away the accursed from among them. And in the morning, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be the tribe which the Almighty shall come according to the families thereof and the families which the almighty shall take shall come by household and the household which the almighty shall take shall come man by man and it shall be that he that have taken the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire right the person that took their sin against small shall be burnt with fire right burnt with fire and all that he have 
because he had transgressed the covenant of the Almighty and because he had wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by the tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of Zerites, and he brought the family of Zerites man by man, and Zabi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmen, the son of Zabi, the son of Zerah, the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, Give, give, I pray thee, glory to the Almighty Yah of Israel. That's the first thing. Give, give the Almighty praise. One thing too is not a spiritual check, but a, a one thing I notice is every once in a while, uh, not all, all the time, but every once in a while, I'll ask a brother to lead in prayer. And not only because it doesn't have to be me to lead in prayer, I don't have to be in the forefront, but how you pray shows a lot of what relationship you have with the most high if you look at how these people pray look at look at these testimonies look at miriam's testimony or look at john the baptist's wife or or look at uh samuel's mother when she gave her testimony you know they had a relationship with the most high and so you say hey, amen a lead in prayer and almighty um you're cool and you know um this food's good and uh let it be so. Amen. You're like, man, do, do you even pray? Bro, what kind of relationship you got with the Most High? And I'm not saying you got to pray and do this powerful prayer in front of people and whatnot and just play the part. But you could tell when 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 you talk to people and they just, oh, did you see the football game or do you see this? And a lot of it's worldly and a little bit spiritual. Like when I talk to people, I try to make sure every congregate, every conversation, even if we talk about business, it's going to have the almighty in it. A, uh, if the Almighty will, we could do this. If the Almighty give us favor, we could do this. If, if a bare minimum, I'm giving glory to the Most High. And so you could just by conversation see, man, do, do you even seek the things of the Spirit? Are you just on the Facebook and Netflix and video games or whatever you do? You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you do this. This is why the first thing says, give the Almighty the praise. Oh, uh, no, and good well he stole. Um, yeah, um, he's cool, man. You know, he... He's the big homie, you know, he's like, give the almighty the praise. So let's keep going. He says, my son, give, I pray thee glory to the almighty of uh, Yah of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou has done or hid it not, hide it not from me. And Achan answered and said, indeed, I have sinned against the almighty Yah of Israel and thus and thus I have done. And when I saw the spoils of the goodly Babylonian garments. 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, 50 shekels of weight. Man, he stole a lot, but let's keep going. And then I coveted them and I took them and behold, they're hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. And Joshua sent messengers and they ran in the tent and behold, it was hidden in stuff and the silver in it. And they, and they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and to all the children of Israel and laid them before the Lord. And Joshua and all the Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, the silver and the gold and the garments and the wedge of the gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them before the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? Because 36 men died because of you, because you sinned against the most high. All of Israel suffered and 36 men went to go take Ai, a small city, and they perished and they left sons and daughters without a father they left wives without a husband because you chose to sin so now we're going to take you and your sons and your, your daughters that were innocent that did nothing that didn't know you were going to go into jericho and sin against the most high we're going to take them too all everything that you have let's keep going in his tent and, and brought it and joshua said why has thou troubled israel the almighty shall trouble thee this day and they stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they stoned them with stones now I, I can only imagine if i did something and now i gotta watch my children get stoned with me watch them get hit with stones and after they stoned us to death they're gonna burn us because a decision i made because you choose not to get baptized because you choose not to repent you choose not to go all the way with the most high. So now your kids suffer. So when your kid winds up a drug dealer or in prison or a whore or do this or do that, because you played around, you heard the word, 
You have time to get saved. You have time to be an example. See, because if my children go out and do that, they knew. They knew that their dad was keeping a standard of holiness and righteousness. They know the way of righteousness and they choose not to go. But when you're a parent and you know the way and choose not to go, and then they go out there, that sin is upon you. That sin is upon you. If they go, if they don't make it into the kingdom and they want an eternal damnation, you have to pay for that. That's because of your behavior. Because some of the people, they play around, oh man, I just need to take care of this and I'll get right with the most high. Oh, and they play around, you know, good and well, you need to put that wheat down. You know, good and well, you shouldn't be lying, committing adultery, stealing, doing this, watching this, listening to this music. No, good and well, and you playing. Like time is granted, time, like you're entitled to another year or to another month. You playing. It doesn't take much to get in a car accident, and bam, you done. And you die in your sins. It doesn't take much. Oh, thank the Almighty. I was almost in this car accident. Yeah, because if you would have died, you would have went straight to the lake of fire. You would have went to sleep. In a day of judgment, you'd have rose up and you would have seen the kingdom. You're like, yeah, I made it. Because this says you're going to see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all of the prophets. And this is you yourself is thrust out. You're going to go see the kingdom. See with your eyes what you would have had. Get judged, get condemned, and get sent to the lake of fire. Simply because you played. It says, I sent my people, they harped and they did not listen. You read the Old Testament. He sent prophets. Thus said the Lord, repent. There's going to be captivity, destruction, famine. They stoned the prophets. They didn't want to hear them. Oh, man, that's a far time. Oh, no. Prophesied smooth things. Go prophesy in another city. They didn't want to hear them. And you're like, man, those prophets are dumb. Why didn't they just serve the Most High? What are you doing? You have the word and you disobey it. And guess what happened? Yo, his kids got stoned because of that. Because he got greedy. And if you read the next one, the very next one, because Jericho was a type of tithes and offering. This is my first fruits. This is the first city you took. All the gold goes in the Almighty's treasury. Immediately after, immediately after they took AI and all the cities, they could get some of that gold. But the Almighty says, this is mine. This is mine. It's a type of tithes. This is the first fruits. This is the first city you took. I get the first fruits of this. The rest of the cities, you could go and get, enjoy the spoils. It's all your land. I gave it to you, a land of milk and honey. But give me mine first. Give me my first fruits. And no, you had to steal from the most high. So now you lost everything. You steal one thing, you lost everything. You steal one thing from the almighty, you lost everything. So let's keep going. So they stoned him with stones. I remember there's this one time recently, recently, recently. I, I don't really, you know what I'm saying? I, I really push, and I know it's macho. I don't really push men crying and whatnot, you know, because I feel that you got to bear the weight for your family. You got to bear the weight of, especially if your brother, racism, you got to toughen up. And I'm not saying man can't cry. I believe man should be able to show their emotions. But I, I try, I teach my son, hey, son, you got to suck it up because your wife and your kids are going to depend on you and you need to be that pillar. You need to be that strength. You know what I'm saying? They need to be able to go and you need to bear that weight. You're going to have to bear that weight of life and life is going to weigh you down and you're still going to have kids depending on you, wife depending on you, mom and dad, whoever. I might get old and you got to take care of mom and dad. We live. You're going to have a heavy life. There's a heavy load being a man and you got to be able to hold that weight. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, there, there's times where you could be weak in your house or whatnot, and there's time you'd be strong. Man, I, I I did a decision. I got sent to a job. I was praying, Almighty, give me a job, give me a job. You know, give me a job. Almighty opens up this job to me. You know, and I get paid pretty decent. I was opening up this job. I made a mistake, a safety violation, man. Same day, made the same mistake. I got kicked off the job. And it was, it took me a while to find that job. I was handing out like 15 resumes. It took me a while to find that job. And I lost the job. This is recently. I was like, dude, I actually cried that day because I let my family down. I got, I, man, I couldn't believe like my whole, my wife, my kids depend on me as a man to make uh, good decisions, to make proper and wise decisions. And I blew it. And I barely, barely cried. I cried that day. And then my wife was like, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay to make bad decisions and affect other people. That's not okay. That's not acceptable. My other buddies at the job and whatnot, my other buddy ended up hiring me and whatnot because he's a foreman. I was supposed to work with him anyways. And it was a blessing. I think the almighty I got laid off for that job. And But 
But um, for me to just see that, like, dude, man, I done let my family down. Man, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And it was outside my character because I don't, that's just uncommon. I have a, as far as work ethics, I'm on it. On time, work hard, do this, do that. I ran work. I've been a farming company, truck, gas cart, all that stuff. You know, I've done it. So for me, that to happen and realize, like, dude, I just financially hurt my family for a decision I made. You know what I'm saying? That hurt me. That hurt me. I, I told uh, a brother, I said, I would rather my wife cheat on me because if you cheat on me, you do what you do. I'm going to move on. It's whatever. Then for me to let my family down, that's what cuts, cuts me. That was like, man, dude, I dropped the ball. It hurt. It hurt hard. Like, I've never been hurt that bad. It, 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 that hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. People call you nigger or whatnot, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's whatever. We can knuckle up. It's nothing. That stuff don't even bother me. We roast each other. None of that stuff bothered me, but for me to drop the ball on my family, our true Hebrews United, it's like that that hurts. You know what I'm saying? But some men don't have that conviction because they're deadbeat dads, they're deadbeat husbands, anyways. But when you strive and then you drop the ball and you cause harm to your family. So when you read this, and this man has to imagine you getting hit, you're ducking, you're dodging, you're getting hit, and you look to your and you see your kid crying, your eight-year-old, 12-year-old crying, getting stoned because of the decision you made. Because you choose not to get baptized. You choose not to repent. You choose not to get right with the Most High. It says the day you hear the Almighty's voice, harden not your heart. You choose not to do right. And you think your kids are not going to suffer for that? You think your kids are really not going to suffer from you not serving the Most High? They're just going to be blessed. But let's keep going. So give me 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all did eat the same spiritual meat. What? That's cool. And all did drink the same spiritual drink for they drank the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Amashiach, right? But with many of them, the Almighty was not well pleased, and they were overthrown in the wilderness, right? Now, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after those uh, 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 evil things as they lusted after. Neither be idolaters as some of some of them, as it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication. Some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt the Amashia. And that's what you do when you hear the word and you don't want to get baptized. And some of them also tempted and were destroyed. Remember, they got destroyed. Kids got destroyed by that. Neither let us murmur as some of them also murmur and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, all these things happen unto them for examples that they are uh, and, and they are written for our abnimation, our warning upon whom the ends of the world are come. We read these scriptures about Joshua and Achan stealing about Sodom and Gomorrah, about Noah, about Samuel. We read these scriptures, how our children suffer for our abnumation. So we could take note and say, hey, I don't want to make that same mistake. It's like the second the second oldest kid and the oldest kid makes a mistake. And same thing. We see sometimes Kamari be making a mistake. And Ario's like, I ain't doing that. I seen what happened to Kamari. He got pulled in that garage and he got to have his own personal Bible study. And they don't like the garage Bible studies. They like the happy Bible study. If I have to pull them in the garage and they taking a the Bible with them, hey, they ain't going to like that type of Bible study. So she sees that and she's like, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't doing what big brother did. And that's what it needs to happen. You see these people like, dude, man, the almighty gave the manna, gave this, they this, and they still, and they got destroyed. I'm good. I'm just going to serve you. I'll serve you. I was talking to the sister the other day. I'm out here in the Bay. I could commit fornication and adultery and no one even know about it. The Almighty knows I'm good. I fear the Most High. I, I, I value my relationship with the Most High. And if you're not baptized and serving the Almighty, you should value wanting to build a relationship with the Most High. You want to build a relationship with the wife. You want to build a relationship with your kids, with your mother. How about you build a relationship with the Most High? How about you focus on that relationship? You know, oh, you know, uh, I'm too tired. I don't have time to read. If you're too tired, then something needs to drop. You can't be too tired for the most high. You can't be too tired to, for the most high. You need to 
get an energy drink, you figure it out. It's time to read, figure it out. It's time to pray, figure it out. You got to do what you need to do to get saved. Do what you need to do to get saved. So we're going to hit the shout outs real quick. Let me get the phone, we'll hit the shout outs. Then we're going to get deeper. We're going to get a little bit deeper. Praise the almighty. Shout outs. Keviet, shout out to Keviet. Johnny, hey, I try to hit you up, Johnny. I don't know if you're on right now. I try to hit you up and uh, you didn't answer last night. Vinny, Angel, Carmelo, uh, shout out Carmelo. I'm going to be, uh, I might can see you. I'm, uh, I don't know. I probably won't see you tomorrow or tonight or whatnot. Katura, Michelle, Ellipsecom, Taja, Shuddy, Shuttles, Betty, Stanley, Christian Cannon, Gia, Hakesh, Jupiter, Baron Champ, Munya B, Ross Thomas, Matana, Melts, Mirez, Occupant, Dis, Anunis. So I appreciate you guys. Hey, thank you for watching. I really want you guys to be safe. Find a congregation. You don't have a congregation. If you need a brother, a lifelong brother that's going to love you with love you and really have your back lifelong, hey, you can have a brother here. You just need to hey, serve the Most High. If you decide you want to be a child of the Most High, you have a brother. Hey, if you want that big brother, you a sister out there, and you want that big brother that you could call to and whatnot, hey, you got. If you want another sister, you got Sister Whitney. Hey, hey there, there's people out here that will really love you how the Bible says to love you, but you got to serve the Most High. If you want that fellow it comes with accountability. You gotta, you gotta serve. You gotta live holy. You gotta live just. You, we are our brothers' keepers. We are our sisters' keepers. But hey, if you guys want some true brothers that really want to love you and be there in your corner, especially when persecution pops off, because you can't fight the whole world by yourself, we gotta stick together. Hey, you got a brother. I'm here for you. I'm in your corner. So uh, thank you, thank you for uh the shout outs for uh, the comments and whatnot, viewing and whatnot. I appreciate you guys. So now this is what they'll say. Well, it doesn't, you know, even if my family suffers, it doesn't dictate their salvation. You know, if something happens, imagine a guy that commits DUI, gets in a car accident and kills him and all his kids. Oh, you know, it doesn't dictate this. So the kids will be in a better place. And Christians say, oh, kids would that die. They all make it into the kingdom. So we're going to look into that because mainly Christians have this conception that if kids die, they're automatically made into the kingdom. Make it into the kingdom or what they call heaven, but into the kingdom, new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you what, what the scripture says on that. Let's get into that. So give me Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verse 47. Luke chapter 12, verse 47. And that servant which knew the Almighty's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You knew the Almighty's will and you chose to disobey. And some of you guys, you guys know. Some of you guys that haven't met yet, that's not even watching right now. If you ever watched this three years from now, you know the word and you still disobeying. It says when you make it into the lake of fire, you're going to be beaten with many stripes. Right. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of death shall be beaten with few stripes. For so, uh, uh, for whomsoever much is given unto him shall much be required, and to whom have committed much of him they will ask the more. Or to whom much is required, who, to whom much is given, much is required. To whom much more is given, much more is required. So, as pertaining to this scripture, in the context, he is going to deal according to knowledge. So we're tying this to kids. Now, uh, the judgment for those tribes in Brazil, or there's an island that's totally separated from the world. They don't know TVs, no nothing, no helicopter. When they come with helicopters, try to land there. They're with spears and they're totally isolated. I would imagine their judgment would be like, hey, did you sleep with your fellow tribesman wife? Did you steal from your fellow tribesmen? Are you deceiving them and telling lies? Their judgment won't be the same judgment that I have because I knew I know the law. You know, so we do know. There's something that dictates their judgment. They had, there's no way truth came to them. They're just in the middle of Brazil or they're those tribe, isolated tribes. No Bibles came. No one told them the truth. No truths ever came to them. They don't know about anyone. There's reserves so you don't spread malaria or spread disease to them because some people, National Geographic, will come and, whoa, let me film you. And then they give them diseases and then they kill a whole tribe off that. And all we have them is on film now. You know what I'm saying? So they do reserves to protect these people. But, um, uh, I don't know the judgment, how he's going to do it, but we do know from this scripture 
their judgment will not be the same as the judgment as when I stand before the judgment seat of Most High. You know, so most cultures they don't they know it's wrong to lie. Most cultures, regardless, they know it's wrong to be with your neighbor's wife. They they know they to steal. They believe in a higher power. Maybe it's idolatry, maybe it's not. But most culture, this new age, Big Bang evolution, this is new. But if you go to all the cultures around the world, they typically have some knowledge that there is a higher power. Whether they believe in 15 gods or just one, they believe there's something above them. So let's keep going. Give me uh, Romans chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 11. Romans chapter 2, verses 11. For there is no respect of persons with the Most High. For as many have sinned without the law shall be perished without the law. And as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Like us that hear the word. We're going to be judged by the books. It says in the books shall be opened in the book of life. And we're going to be judged for every deed according to the flesh, according to his laws, his statutes, his judgments, his precepts, and his ways. We're going to get judged according to that. These people that had no knowledge of the law, they're going to perish without the law. I don't know if some of them will be saved or not. The Almighty get, is the ultimate judge on that. There's no scripture on how these people that's never heard the word, that's these isolated tribes, what kind of judgment they have. That's all judgment belong to him. So, but we do hear that these people will be judged without the law. These children, tying this back to our children that did not know the law, that really had no understanding between good and evil when they die, what happens to them. So we do know that they will be judged accordingly. But I, I believe that these sinner kids won't be saved. Reason being is because all throughout the Bible, if the adults sinned, so did the kids get destroyed. And then you could say, well, it says, you know, a, a father should not, a son should not pay for the sins of the father. That's when we pass judgment. That's when we pass judgment. When we pass judgment, our law says, hey, the son cannot uh, 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 pay for the sins of the father or be put to death for the sins of the father, neither the father for the sins of the son. We have that. We can't do that. But the almighty has been doing that. He's always been doing that. We've just seen this multiple times. I think five times. Genesis, Samuel, Numbers, Joshua. So four times. Oh, so uh, actually five times. Genesis 6 and Genesis 18. So I'm going to show you why. Now, this is why I believe that your kids won't make it in if you don't be safe. And, and is this concrete? No. But this scripture points points to kids not making it into the kingdom if their parents aren't saved or one of their parents are saved. I'm not saying that it's there is no scripture that says a kid that dies and that's that's the sinner is going to make it. People believe that there is no scripture for that. This scripture points to that. If you have sinner parents and you die as a child, eight year old, six year olds, you will not make it. It doesn't say concrete, but there's evidence that points to this. But let's keep going. Strong evidence. First Corinthians chapter seven. And we're going to start at verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 7. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Almighty, let not the wife depart from the husband. You married people out there going through stuff, hey, don't depart. If you can stick it out, stick it out. Check this out. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled unto her husband. And let not the husband put away the wife. So it's not the Almighty's will for you to separate. If anyone separates, that's because one or two people are not serving the most high. One or two people are not repentant. Or, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 more likely, it's a little bit of both. They're both ain't right with the most high, and both of them ain't trying to repent and get right with the most high. Because if they really seek in the almighty, there's no reason why you can't reconcile. But and if you do have to depart, say you have someone that's not serving the most high, and you got to depart, it says, hey, you got to remain unmarried. Hopefully, they repent and get it together and be reconciled to the husband. Let's keep going. But the rest I speak not I uh uh speak I not the Almighty. If a brother have a wife that is uh, that believeth not, she plead please to dwell with him. Let let him not put her away. If you have an unbeliever, you came to the gospel. Both of you guys were sinner. You came to the gospel, and she chooses not to come to the gospel. Hey, don't don't put her away. Uh, so and the same thing. Like uh, uh, 
this situation only happens if one became a believer and they were both sinners. Because if you're a believer, you don't marry someone outside the Most High. The Bible this in the same chapter. You only can marry someone that's serving the Most High. Let's keep going. And uh, and, and and the woman, verse 13, which have a husband that believeth not. If he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. The unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So it's saying your children are unclean. But when you serve the Almighty, your children are holy. So if you're not serving the Almighty and you're not baptized, your children are unclean. Just keep this in mind. Your children are unclean. Because you don't want to get baptized. You don't want to serve the Most High. You don't want to repent. Your children are unclean. This explains why he says, okay, you want to steal from me? Take your wife, take your sons, take your daughters, take all your stuff. We're going to stone them. We're going to burn them. Oh, you want to mess up? We're taking everybody out. You want to mess up? We're taking everybody out. We take all the children in Sodom and Gomorrah out because they all unclean because the parents are unclean. Noah was righteous. Guess what happened? His kids were sanctified. It didn't even say Noah's sons were living for the Almighty like Noah was. Noah was perfect. It didn't say his sons were perfect. It didn't say his son's wife was perfect. It didn't say Noah's wife was perfect. But Noah was perfect. And because of that, hey, my children are clean. Get in the boat. You know what I'm saying? Get in the boat. Now, there is a scripture where it says, hey, if Noah, uh, Job, and Daniel were uh, uh, were uh, and persecution came, they're only saved themselves. They're not going to save th save their children. Or whatnot. He said, "Hey, I'm doing away with that." But we see right there, even now to this day, First Corinthians. If you are a sinner, your children are unclean. Let's keep going now. Now, give me Isaiah 35 and eight. Remember, unclean, but now are you holy? Unclean, holy. Right? It says here, I'll read it real quick. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the uh, 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 by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. So remember those two words. Isaiah 35 and 8. Praise the Almighty. How much time we got? All right, we doing good. Isaiah 35 and 8. And a highway shall be there. There's a highway. You know what I'm saying? Get on the highway, right? And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Right? The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring man, no fool shall not err therein. It says there is a way called the way of holiness. The unclean ain't getting in it. The unclean ain't passing over it. The unclean ain't getting in. And your children are unclean if you don't live holy. So what makes you think they're getting into the kingdom? A holy place. What makes you think they're getting into the kingdom if they're unclean? Because you choose not to repent. Do you want to follow the mistakes of Achan? Are you going to steal from the Most High? Are you going to steal your kids' salvation? You owe it to your kids to be saved. You owe it to your kids to be saved. You are the best thing you could do for your kid is get saved. So. Last scripture, give me the revelation. We're going to get this into the news. Give me a uh, revelation chapter nine. Let's see what he's doing in revelation chapter nine. Last scripture. Praise the Almighty. Hopefully this word goes forth and deals with some people. They get a, get their heart right, really want to get right with the Most High. I know I'll be teaching a hard gospel sometimes, but, hey, I love you guys. I want you guys to, to be your best person you could be in the Most High. Revelation chapter 9, verse 20. Let's get it. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, because the Almighty sent, is going to send plagues and pour out vials and blow trumpets upon this world and destroy everybody. Everybody, children included, because these are unclean children. Unclean parents equate to unclean children. A good tree can not, cannot produce evil fruit, and an evil tree per, cannot produce good fruit. Let's keep going. Uh, we're not killed of these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not 
worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented of their murders, nor of their sources, nor of their fornications or their deaths. So this is something that when the Almighty passed judgment, these people ain't going to repent. But the Almighty's passing judgment on the whole planet. There's still going to be children, little three-year-olds, 12-year-olds. He's killing everyone off. He's killing these. He's destroying. The, when the Almighty passed judgment, he's passing judgment on the world. And that includes those children. So I don't see why people get this. Oh, you know, even if I don't live for the Almighty and my son died of cancer or my son got in a car accident and died, he's going to go to a better place. Why? You a sinner. Why would you think that your kid's going to go in a better place? You lived in sin. That means your kids are unclean. Your kids are unclean. So what makes you think they're going to make it into the kingdom? If if a kid could automatically make it into the kingdom, right? Why would he even say your kids are unclean? It doesn't matter. I'm still going to make it into the kingdom. Why would it matter else were your children unclean, but now are they holy? Why would it matter if their children are unclean or holy, if no matter what, they're going to make it into the kingdom if they died? Or because you live in sin and your kids die before uh, before you, your kids going straight to like they're going they go, they ain't gonna make it in the kingdom. They ain't gonna make it in the kingdom because of you. You're gonna follow Achan. Now everyone suffered. That his whole family got stoned because of his decision. Don't let that be. Those are it says those were written for our example that we don't follow their footsteps. Make better decisions. It says you know when you know better you should do better. When you know better you should do better. So praise the Almighty. Um, we're gonna deal with the news. Turn that with the news. I need you guys to look up the. It's called the Trump stamp. Hey, they're doing this in Africa, so they end up linking up with Mastercard. It's an AI. It's a retina. So they found. Of course, they test Africa and they test all their st stupid stuff because they don't mind. Especially Bill Gates is pushing this hard. They I think they raised like six billion, uh, billion, or trillion, six trillion dollars, I believe, uh, to push this. So they're with AI. So it's a retina scan. It lets you know if you uh, had all your vaccinations it's called a trust stamp. It's like it, that. And it, they scan your retina. Bam. They know they know whatever vaccination you had and you purchase things through your facial recognition. They, you purchase things biometrics. I say biometrics, not uh, facial recognition, biometrics. So they're already testing this in Africa right now and they're trying to go global and they're with MasterCard. So now there's a way for you to purchase things. And they call it a, a cavi system. They're trying to do away with cash. Check this out. As soon as they do away with this, right? As soon as they do away with this, for you to be able to buy or sell, what what kind of system are they going to have? Are they going to have some beast system? Once they do away, once they get all these countries to say, "Hey, we're what Mastercard will do," you do a retina, no, no, uh, identity theft. You come, they scan you, they come, whatever chip, whatever, they come do this. Hey, we know who has microchips, who has what, who's doing what, what people buy. We track everything down. We know what they say on YouTube, Facebook. Everything's bam. Once that's done, then it's a wrap. It's a wrap. You could, what happens? Oh, I, I'm gonna stand for the gospel. Now you can't buy or sell. And the thing is. When you don't serve the Almighty, the Bible says, watch and pray that these days don't catch you unaware. The Bible says, watch and pray. So what happens when, it, it, you know, for me to get unemployment, they had to do some little retina scan, kind of like they do at the airport for me to fly. So if I walk by a stop sign and I had a warrant and say if they were monitoring that, they could be like, oh, that guy has a warrant. Whew, cops could roll up, whatever, follow me, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's track you, know what you buy, know what you do. So. They, they're already trying to make this a global thing. They're trying to do away with cash. The last thing we want them to do is do away with cash before, because for you to get in their system, you're probably going to have to sin against the most high. For you to buy and sell, you're probably going to have to sin against the most high. When they uh, unleash this stuff that's going on, this is already going on in Africa, a small area. They're already pushing this and they're trying to make it global. And it's going to take some time for them to get the whole world to leave off cash and get onto a global system, maybe a war, maybe whatever. They're pushing this. They're pushing this hard. They're pushing this coronavirus because by default, you can't you can't protest. Oh, we got coronavirus. Hey, you can't protest. Let's pass the law legislation. You can't protest during uh, COVID. Now what? Now how do you stand up for your rights? Now how do you stand up and protest? So if you can't focus on your salvation, you're not going to be able to watch and pray. And when these days catch you unaware, which it will, then guess what happens? 
who suffers? Once again, your kids. Once again, your kids. Stop focusing on buying certain things. Hey, when the lights go out right now, if you don't have two months worth of food and water and you can stay warm wherever you're at, then you're not, you, you got to come up higher. You got to come up higher. We did this thing last week. Everyone figure out a way that way, make at least an extra 50 bucks a week. If you have to find a new job, find a new job, get out your comfort zone. Success does not come when you stay in your comfort zone. Success comes when you get out of your comfort zone. When you get out of your comfort zone, that's where success comes. For you to lose weight and get in shape, you have to be uncomfortable. You have to go run. You have to go jog. You have to go swim. You have to go bike. You have to go hike. You have to get out your comfort zone for you to see progress spiritually, financially, no matter what. You have to do something different. And so, hey, push. Get your stuff together. Improve. Uh, what's the other thing with the news? Look up. It's called the trust stamp. Trust stamp. They're already linked up with MasterCard. They're already doing it. They're just trying to make it global. Trust stamp. All right. Um, same thing with the unemployment. I said with the, they did the scan recognition, the face recognition. Now, all these people that got unemployment because they banked, they pretty much did away with the middle class with this COVID shutdown. Now, all these people, thousands of people doing facial recognition. Bam, we're all in the system. It's just like if we had the sign and we did this. It don't matter now. We in the system now. I'm in the system. But the difference is, is I don't plan to be in this land. I plan to be out this land. That's the difference. I have something to go to. You people out here that's not watching and praying, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck because you're not watching and praying. And of course, you're not watching and praying. He's not going to show you anything if you ain't repenting. You ain't repenting. So get it together. Your kids are counting on you. You owe it to your kids to be saved. You owe it to your kids to be saved. So hopefully that helps you. Oh, and the inmates, they, uh, uh, Whitney said something about, Sister Whitney said something about the inmates. They're uh, decreasing their prison sentence if they get the COVID vaccine and whatnot. I don't know what's up. I don't believe this COVID vaccine is a, is a mark as of yet. I think if they link up with biometrics and AI and all this stuff and be able to buy and sell and you have to get vaccination and all that stuff. Yeah, I believe that stuff. Um, only reason why I say is I don't feel it's the mark of the beast or anything is because China doesn't use Pfizer or Madura. China, China and, and, and uh, Russia ain't even using the companies that, that we use to make our vaccinations. Now, if the whole world uses the same system, like they're trying to make this MasterCard global retina uh, facial recognition biometric system going on, like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is Bill Gates is messing some stuff up for the saints of the most high. He's making it to where we need to start moving faster. We need to start figuring out ways to make more money. Money is defense. You need to be on your money game. Get on your hustle game. Because time is running out. Stuff is working. They're already passing legislations and stuff behind the scenes. We think it's cool. And then when it hits you, it's going to hit you hard. Our life will never go back to pre-corona. Our life, how we had it before the March of the other year, how we had it. That It's not going back to that. It's done. They kept saying a new normal it, the Great Reset, it, that's done. It's not going back. It's only going to get worse from here on out. And it's going to get here worse at a faster pace. There is no going, oh, I just can't wait until we, you know, we're done with this COVID and this and this. It's not none of that. There's none of that. They're going to make it, whether they release a new strand that they created and say, because of this, we need to make vaccinations mandatory because of this or this or we need to do it. You can't travel or you, they already did the LA. I told you about the LA. Your kids can't come to school unless they get this vaccination. They're going to make it tight. It's going to get tight. I don't see why people don't want to get out of this country. The U.S. is not the place to be. It's not the business. Hurry up and get your chips and get gone. Get your stuff together. Passport. If you have to deal with uh, filing for full custody because you got custody issues so you could get your kid's passport. I know some of you guys got uh, old tickets and stuff. like. I get it. You got to take it. Whatever you got to take care of, take care of. Get your chips and get gone. This country is not the country to be at. When it goes down, it's going to go down. And they're going to force it. When they start knocking on your door and say, hey, we noticed uh, that your kids didn't get his vaccination. And CPS stops and say, hey, we're going to have to take your kids if you don't get your kids a vaccination. We actually got it in the car right now. We could we could shoot them up right now. We shoot them up with this retina. We could shoot them up with whatever. Shoot them up with this microchip. We could do it right now. Or we're going to have to take your kids. What are you going to do? Oh, you didn't repent. You didn't live holy. You didn't watch and pray. Now you're in a situation and it catch you unaware. Because you weren't dis disciplined. Oh, because you played around. You said instead of coming home and studying or coming home and going to a night school or coming home and going to another job to make extra money, you came home and watched TV all day. 
And then, oh, I don't have the money to get out of Babylon. I wonder why. I wonder why. All you people out there, start trying to get a job online. Figure out what you could do online. Make a little bit or a lot of money. That way you have a job when you need to leave the country. You can still work from the States and make your money from the States, even though you're in another country. Find another trade. Find another facet. You people that, hey, I do, I do sheet metal. I make good money. I'm in the union. I'm trying to find something where I do not have to do construction. Find something different. Find a second career, a second occupation. You Whitney out there, you need to be focusing on your stuff because I might stuff might pop off. I might need to come there half caught. I might have not have everything together when I need to fly out to Belize and I ain't coming back to the States. I'll leave my car with someone like, hey, take the car. You can have the car, sell it, split the money. I don't care. Let's do it. And I'm gone. And once I make that last plane flight, I, I hope we have more time. But if I got to make that last plane flight, I ain't looking back. Take my little bit of stuff. Drive my car to whoever I, I'm cool with. Hey, it's all yours. There's a pink slip. Have at it. Sell it. Send me the money. Send me half the money. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know and I'm saying I'm bouncing. I ain't looking back. I ain't going to be like Lot's wife. I ain't looking back. So let the Almighty's will be done. Hopefully that helps you guys out. I uh, want you guys to make it into the kingdom. Be safe. Share this video. And also uh, get on the Facebook. Put some likes and ring them some likes. Thumbs up when this video gets on there be a blessing with all that said being done keeps uh let me read some comments real quick all right cool hearts trump stamp yeah trump stamp there you go um what else you guys got going on cool um i'm glad that it touched you guys praise all my praise all money amen amen Cool. Brother Eric, cool. Shout out to you guys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. You guys are just talking to each other. Hey, keep standing. Don't drop standards. Give the all my hat clap. Shalom.